Welcome back to Waters Ironworks. I am Philip, and we're going to uh, look at the next project in our ongoing fireplace uh, series. Um, they say if you're going to demonstrate something for someone, you should have made it a hundred times before you ever do it. I've never made one of these, so <laughs> let's have some fun. Uh, it should be a pretty simple project, though. What we're going to be looking at making, and you should have seen it in the screenshots at the beginning, is a simple twist style campfire fork. Um, if you made these really long, you could use them for roasting hot dogs or marshmallows, something like that. Uh, I may make a slightly shorter one. Um, let's uh, take a look. So I've got my ruler here. I've got some, um, this is quarter inch round stock, which I think will be plenty thick for what I plan on using it for. And I don't know exactly how long I need this to be. Um, so my thought is I want something that is roughly that long when I'm holding it. Um, it seems like a reasonable length uh, for your marshmallows. This project is going to um, take this piece of steel, put a point on the end, bend it around, wrap it, and then um, wind up with two tines. So we'll have both ends facing one way, it folded over in half and wrapped around itself. So if I want something that's roughly 24 inches, that's 24 inches right there, so that'll be the midpoint. And we'll come out here then to 40, no, no, 124 plus 124 is 48. That's how math works. Um, so this 48 inch length, it'll give me something that's probably going to be a little under 24 inches, um, but I think that'll work okay. So I'm going to grab my hardy tool, a brass hammer here. I'm going to imperil my cameraman, slide this out past him, and just give it a couple whacks. All I'm doing is putting a notch in it right there so that when I heat this up, um, I know where to uh, cut it. Something this thin, I might even be able to just bend it back and forth, but we'll get it hot since we're blacksmiths and cut that off. So I'm gonna pay attention to where it is, kinda tuck it down there in the fire and get this hot and uh, cut it off. So one tip when you're heating your piece of steel at the fire, if you wanna check its temperature, I'm going to grab this right here, pull it out, look at it, put my hand back. And because I indexed my hand against the side of the forge, I know that middle part is going right back in the fire exactly where I want. I mean it. That can be easier if you're uh, struggling making sure that you are getting the right part of your steel heated up. So I am almost there. I'll finish heating this and be right back with you. All right. I think we are probably good and hot here. This is long and kind of heavy, so it's going to get bendy on me. That's okay. Bring it here. Get it lined up with my cut. Just a couple hits, and we're through. Ideally, I would not have chopped all the way through this. I would have stopped before I, I did, but no. sometimes you hit it a little harder than you mean to. Uh, I want to remember that this end is the hot end. So I'm gonna come around here to the far side, pick this up, back into the fire. I'll put away my brass hammer, grab my other hammer here, and we'll get to working on this. We've got our steel hot. Uh, it's pretty thin, so it heats up nice and quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a point on one end. This will form one of the tongs, and then I'm gonna come in and put a point on the other end. Definitely hot. As always, when I'm putting a point on something, what I want to do is come to the far side of the anvil, hammer blows right there on the edge of the anvil, going half on, half off, in order to form that point. This is ringing on me. I'm going to hang these guys back off there to cut out some of that ringing. That sounds a lot better. Put a point on there. Once I've got that, I'm going to work my way back a little bit. Draw a nice little taper on here. This is already pretty thin stock. 
it's going to be going into things like um, hot dogs and marshmallows. So I don't need either an especially sharp taper or um, an especially long refined taper. So we'll get it square. I'm going to heat this up. We'll come back in. We'll round it up. But I'm going to take, you know, two thirds of the face of the anvil or three quarters, something like that. Try and match that on the other side when I do that. But let's finish rounding this end up. We are hot again. I'm going to come in here, knock in the corners of this a little bit. Same thing over here. As long as this winds up something between round and an octagon, I'm going to be happy. I just don't want sharp corners. So I'll take it to an octagon and then just work my way back as it cools down. Slowly hammering to try and make that reasonably round. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and quench this end. I'm going to make sure I get well down in there into the quench tub so that I don't have anywhere that's going to be hot here in the middle. I'm in good shape. We'll flip it around, heat up the same end, and do the same thing. Okay, back to the far side of the anvil. Half on, half off blows. Back and forth. I've got it balanced against my hip back here to try and keep it steady. Put a point on it and then start drawing it back. Like the last one, I want somewhere around, and I think I went a little further, three quarters the face of the anvil. I think I want more like half the face here. But nobody will notice that. Uh, let's get it hot and we will go in and round it up just like we did the last one. Okay, we're good and hot. Let's come in, take it to an octagon, and then start rounding it. There we go. That is good and round. So I've got both end rounds. The next step on this is I need to heat up the middle and fold it in half. Um, then I'm going to want to twist the whole length of it. So I think I'm going to get it hot in the middle in the forge here. Um, and when we go and do the twist, the key to a nice twist is a long even heat. So I'm probably going to fire up my propane forge. We'll heat up and get ready for the twist in that propane forge uh, instead of the coal forge because this has a pretty small fire pot in it. So let's do the bend um, to get this in half first. And I'm just going to kind of wing it, right? So there's my halfway point. Take that. Toss it down in there and get it hot. Steel is hot at this point. I'm, and there, there's a number of ways that I could do this bend. Over the horn would be pretty common. Um, I'm actually gonna grab a cone mandrel here that we can drop in our hardy hole. And rather than using the hammer to do this, I'm just gonna make sure that far end is cool. Grab it on both sides. and just bend it around here. Uh, I think I should not have bent it quite that much. That'll be okay. I'm eventually gonna to wanna to come in and twist this. Um, just kinda of seeing what size I want that to be. Um, unfortunately, now that I've bent it this far, uh, it won't fit in my uh, propane forge this way. So I'm gonna to need to get this hot one more time and close these up. I think that handle size is about what I want. Um, so we'll get it hot, 
will quench off the handle, leave the heat right there so that I can close it again. And at that point, we'll be ready to go over to the propane forge. We've got this hot, bring it over here. I'm gonna quench off the parts that I don't want to move. Drop it back here and bring this back around. I will want to get this tighter um, when I go into the propane forge, but this is thin enough now that it'll fit in the propane forge. I'll be able to get a good long heat on it. Little off on my lengths. I may try and adjust that um, as we come out of the propane forge. But let's go get that fired up. Uh, it'll take a couple minutes and once this is hot, uh, I'll be back with you. We've got the propane forge heating our piece of steel here. The forge is still a little cool, but our steel I think is at a temperature I can work with. I want to close these arms up some, so again I'm going to come to the quench tub those down. I think I'm just going to drop it over the horn like this. Uh, these tongs are not quite big enough. Work my way down here a little bit. I'm going to get this hot. We'll go in and we'll close these up a little bit more. I want these lying right across, uh, right next to each other uh, before I go in and do the twist. That looks like it's the right heat. Quench it off a little bit. Come in here with the hammer. Let's finish closing that up. mind it being a little tighter. Um, I think because I'm quenching this area, it's acting like a spring. I'm going to heat this up again. We're going to leave this hot and see if I can close them up that way. We've got it hot. Rather than quench it, yeah, look how much better that works. This loop might be a little bit bigger than I want now that I look at it, but we're going to leave it the way it is. Um, as you can see, it worked a lot better keeping this whole area hot. I was just careful not to hammer on it. Um, and that's one of the things, if you're making something new, you've got to play around with it, try different things out, see what works. Uh, at this stage, I want to get this whole section right here hot, and then we're going to go in and twist it. I'm going to want to clamp this in the vise, I think, put a pair of tongs through this end, and use that in order to twist it around. So I'm actually gonna grab this with my tongs. We're gonna put this in the forge. My forge is not long enough for this entire piece to fit in it, but the back end does open. This may be not quite as hot as I would like, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I'm gonna come here to the vise. Put in the last couple inches. I do need to make sure I get both, both legs here. Drop this in. I'm trying to avoid touching it. this back up and do this a different way. Um, if one of these legs come pops out like this one did, then I'm not going to get a good twist on here. 
So um, I'm going to get it hot. I'm going to think about how I want to twist that to make sure I can hold it. I may clamp it in something like this instead. We've got this hot again. I'm going to go in vertically this time instead, which will make this a little bit tall, but that'll be okay. I'm going to quench these tongs. They got a little warm on me last time. Come in here. Let's just keep twisting this. It's pretty th thin material, so even if it's a little on the cool side, not too tough to twist. And I'm just going until I think it looks twisty enough. I'd like to get a little more twisting in here. This section I think looks pretty good. Um, it's pretty cold, colder up here than it is down here. So I'm going to pop this open, heat up this section, and we'll do a twist there. Uh, we're leaving this bottom end untwisted to form the tines for our fork. Quench that off. Over here to the vise. Quench those off. Just finish twisting that. Try and get all these twists to look pretty even. I think that looks okay. Let's pop it out of the vise. We'll go over here to our wooden anvil. Just going to give it a couple blows here to straighten it out a little bit. Leveling this anvil or this table and maybe making a hammer that's more than a root ball um, would make it this straightening process a little easier. One of the uh, first blacksmiths that I worked with out here uh, made this um, after he'd been blacksmithing for a couple months. And I always told him that this was the best thing he ever blacksmithed. So he's a fun guy. He appreciates that comment a lot. So this is just about hot. Go ahead and come on in. And what we're going to do now is shape the tines. So I want to spread them out from each other a little bit maybe give them a little bit of a scoop, and we're gonna do that on the horn of this anvil right over here. So, grab these, I'm gonna steal a hammer. Let's get them lined up a little bit first. Put them on either side of the horn here. Spread them out a little bit. Give them a bit of a bend here, hammering off the side of the anvil. I think I'd actually like these to be spread and then come back parallel with each other. And they've got more of a bend than I think I really want. And they are not lined up with my handle. So I'm thinking I want them How do I want them? Do I want them going this way? Do I want them going this way? I'm not sure. What I do know is whichever way I want them to go, I want this wound up tighter. So uh, I thought we were ready to spread these and get them shaped, but I'm going to heat them up again. I'm, I'm going to twist this end uh, a little bit tighter. I think I only want that much that's not twisted. So let's do that first. Okay, let's go to the vise. Come here, squeeze these closed a little bit, put them in this direction, get them nice and clamped. Twist these tighter. Even though I'm twisting up here at the top, because the bottom is the part that's hot, 
that is the part that's going to bend and twist. So I'll get those nice and twisted. Let's take a look at that. I think I'm going to be a lot happier. Yeah, with the length on these, this looks like it's going to be a lot more reasonable now when I get that spread out and um, and bent into shape. So uh, let's heat it up one more time. I'm going to quench off the back end of this so I'm able to hold it, not have to use these tongs. Back into the fire. Okay. So let's spread these apart again. Tap them so that they don't get too far apart. I think I kind of want most of the spread right in there at the base. Then bring them in parallel for most of their length. a couple taps here. What I'd like is to put a little bit of a bend. Up. The idea being that as you're holding this, um, it swoops up a little bit so that uh, you're marshmallow or your hot dog or whatever you're cooking doesn't fall off. Now you can see looking at these that um, that little bit of offset that we got because I didn't bend them exactly evenly that's showing up more than I'd like. So how do we fix it? The answer is we're gonna go back to the grinder and we're just gonna make that one a little bit shorter uh, and we won't tell anybody we did it so all hand forged. I'll see you at the grinder. There we go. We finished a very simple style twist fork. Um, perfectly even ends, all done by hand. Certainly no grinder in there. Um, if it does look like there's a little bit of grinding that happened, an easy way to cover that up is put it back in the forge, get it hot again, let it scale back up, and it'll get rid of any shiny spots on there. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's a little bit shorter, maybe quite a bit shorter than the 24 inches I was looking for. I'll measure it and drop those dimensions in the, uh, the description below. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this overall. What I would do if I'm going to use this um, and, and put food on it especially is I want to treat this like cast iron. So I'll take it to a wire wheel on either my grinder or with an angle grinder wire wheel, clean it up, get all the scale off there. Um, and then I'm going to put a little bit of fat on it, put it in the oven, 450, 500, um, and treat it just like cast iron. Get a nice um, uh, patina on there. That'll be good and food safe. That'll obviously have a tendency to burn off in the fire, so you'll need to reapply it. Um, but that's going to be a better choice than painting it or something like that. The other option is, you know, a little bit of iron probably never hurt anyone. A little bit of rust probably never hurt anyone. Um, you can probably use it um, as is without a whole lot if you don't mind that. So thank you guys very much. Um, we'll do a couple more of these videos once we've got a little kit built up. We'll go out and we'll make a fire um, and see how all these things work uh, in use. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, if you are interested in seeing more of these, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications uh, whenever I post new videos. Thanks a lot. Happy forging.